Hello, I'm CJ Wellerman. Don't forget to subscribe to our show. Now let's get into it. You don't need me to share with you the details of the recent burning of the Quran outside a mosque in Sweden on June 28, during the Islamic holiday of Eid al adha You've seen the righteous and dignified response from the Muslim world, including Muslims in Sweden, who gathered in their thousands last week to collectively recite several beautiful verses from Islam's holy book as a form of peaceful protest. And you don't need me to tell you that we've seen a growing trend among secular extremists who have set fire to Islam's holy book, hmm. like the far-right Danish personality who burned a copy of the Quran outside the Turkish embassy in Stockholm in January. You know all of this. And you also know that giving airtime or oxygen to these spiteful characters serves only to encourage more Islam haters to do the exact same thing. But what you may not be aware of is that when it comes to the hateful act of setting fire to the Quran, the international media has shown only the tip of the iceberg because deliberately hidden from view are the identities and issues that drive and motivate the hateful act of setting fire to the Quran. Put simply, there's much more to this story than meets the eye. So for the remainder of this episode, I will reveal the key players and the lies and doublespeak they hide behind when talking about the rising problem of anti-Islam protests. But let's start with the United Nations, where members voted to pass a resolution condemning the burning of the Quran last month. Proposal L23, as already revised, is therefore adopted. Copies. Now, conveniently left out of this story are the countries that voted for and against the motion. Because when you look at this list here, then what you see is an exercise in shameless duplicity from a whole host of Islam-hating nations. I mean, it's no surprise that pretty much every country that voted against the resolution, identified here in red, are Western democracies that have done absolutely zero to protect persecuted Muslim minorities in their own countries and mm. abroad. But even more shamefully, here's China. It voted for the resolution condemning the burning of the Quran, which is jaw-dropping, given China systematically disappears Uyghur Muslims who recite Islam's holy book while jailing millions of others for practicing their faith. The Chinese government has also demolished thousands of mosques across the country, like this centuries-old mosque in Yunnan province, which was bulldozed by authorities last month as part of its nationwide crackdown on mm. Islam. Therefore, the Chinese government stand against the burning of the Quran in Sweden couldn't be more hypocritical and perverted. Equally shameless, however, is the Russian President Vladimir Putin, who gave this statement on June 30. This is a guy who has murdered 200,000 Muslims in Chechnya and potentially hundreds of thousands more in Syria during the past two decades. This is a guy who has forcibly sent tens of thousands of Muslims in Russia and Dagestan to die for his criminal invasion of Ukraine, which we revealed in this episode here. But more recently, Putin carried out a series of violent raids on several mosques on the outskirts of Moscow on July 7th for the purpose of forcing even more Muslims to be used as cannon fodder in the Ukraine. Oh, and let's not forget that Russia orchestrated the Quran burning protest that took place in front of the Turkish embassy in Sweden early this year, with Putin's objective being to enrage Turkey in hope that doing so would ultimately sabotage Sweden's application to NATO. But before we go on, we urgently need your help to counter injustices in the Muslim world. And we can't continue this effort without your help. So please consider supporting my journalism at patreon.com slash CJ You'll be helping me bring these stories to a wider audience. Thank you. Now back to our show. As we have seen, there's always more than meets the eye whenever a Quran is set on fire. These vulgar acts are often designed by Islam-hating countries 
to drive a wedge between and among Muslim populations. Also, it's a technique deployed by sectarian forces within the Muslim world. Remembering that the guy who set fire to the Quran in Sweden last month was a former member of an Iranian-backed sectarian militia that frequently bombed mosques in Syria while fighting alongside Assad and Russian forces. But even more shocking is the manner in which some Muslim countries, specifically the United Arab Emirates, fund Islam-hating far-right groups throughout Europe to incite Islamophobic activities, including Quran-burning protests. In fact, a new report found that the UA paid these groups and individuals more than $6 million to smear Muslim human rights activists and leaders as members of the Muslim Brotherhood, a smear campaign that has resulted in the closures of Islamic charities, schools, and mosques. Just 10 days ago, a burned copy of the Quran was thrown at a mosque in Germany which points to a rise in copycat attacks on Islam's holy book across Europe. But let me finish with this message to Islam haters and would-be Quran burners. Burning the Quran makes absolutely no sense whatsoever, because the Quran isn't a book per se. It's a recitation from God to the Prophet Muhammad, a recitation that hundreds of millions of Muslims have already learnt by heart. I mean, even Muslim children as young as six years of age can recite the Quran in its entirety without guidance. You can now see just how silly your effort to burn the Quran truly is, so knock it off. But even more importantly, take a close look at how Muslims behave towards your own holy books. I mean, have you ever seen a Muslim set fire to the Bible or Torah? No, because Muslims cherish these books, viewing them as divinely inspired by God, no different than the way they view the Quran. And finally, let this Muslim man in Sweden be your guide. To make his point, he got approval from the Swedish government to set fire to the Bible and Torah, but refused to follow through with the act by saying this. Really, what more needs to be said here, other than to urge all non-Muslims to follow his example, because his attitude exemplifies how all of us can and must coexist peacefully and harmoniously. It really is that simple. Anyway, that's my time for today. Hmm. Oh, guys. This, to me, this is totally wrong. No matter how provoked you are or how angry you are or how how far you like maybe you don't agree to some things that doesn't mean you should burn down an holy book quran is an holy book there, there is always consequences when you do you know destroy something of god so i, I i'm just imagine what actually warranted this you know kind of behavior from that particular man and i think not only him i think few people to did the same thing but what I would just say is that they should take it easy, no matter the pressure or what they are seeing out there that warranted them to take this action. They shouldn't have done that. They should have just held back, held back. And you can speak your mind, but you burning the Quran is it's totally wrong. It's totally wrong. It's totally wrong. I don't know whether they, they because of the misconception about Islam being, you know, a terrorist, you know, maybe, I don't, I just, I'm just imagining what actually led to it, but, wow, 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 this is a sad one to hear. I think I came across the video on YouTube, but I didn't actually watch it because I don't like watching such news. It's heartbreaking. It's, it really breaks my heart anytime I see such news because I'll be like, what? What is it? How did we get there? How did they get there? What happened? 
what led to it they should have just calmed down oh thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one bye